Caulfield Cup winner. A half length away, making ground, Citizen, a length and a half track and back, followed by Donegal Mistress, the home turn, Sonic Express travelling well, a half length to Dr. Grace, the immediate challenger, as they straighten up, a length and a half further away is Prince Hillier here, they're followed by Kessam, in behind them, Citizen starting to go forward, followed by Kirksight, they're in the stretch with about 300 to go, Sonic Express has kicked away about two and a half lengths to Dr. Grace and Citizen down the outside, running on resolutely, Kessam back behind them, followed by Prince Hillier, who can't go on, Sonic Express is the leader, here comes the Doctor on the outside, Sudden Citizen is down the outside. Dr. Grace on the outside has taken the lead with 100 to go, but Citizen is flowing home. Dr. Grace just in front. Dr. Grace has won it. Dr. Grace has won from Citizen. Close for third aisle or Sonic Express. Here's Dr. Grace now nudging $3 million in stakes. Citizen, uh, the two best horses in the race, fought out the finish of the race. Let's go to the Ascot Vale. They're racing. And Terse on the inside was one of the first to jump out with Law My Wandering Star coming out of the course proper now. Noble Lancer on the outside, Prince of Praise. Terse is over on the inside looking for a run deeper on the track. Canonized, followed by Hula Grey. And further back, Hula Warrior, followed by Chief Headhunter and back behind them. Over on the inside is Lady Purpose, followed by Ready to Explode. Here's Terse getting a run on the inside, coming to the 250. Noble Lancer's taken the lead. Terse is now under pressure. Noble Lancer is the leader. Terse is coming at it on the inside. Noble Lancer just in front. Terse almost level. Terse on the inside. Terse going home the better. Terse has just won it a great run. Terse has won by a head to Noble Lancer. Three length seat. Terse is now under pressure. Noble Lancer is the leader. Terse is coming at it on the inside. Noble Lancer just in front. Terse almost level. Terse on the inside. Terse going home the better. Terse has just won it a great run. Terse has won by a head to Noble Lancer. Three lengths away third. Did he do it? Well, he sure did do it. Uh, Terse running a record faster than any other three year old has run. Terse, just, just on the Cox Plate finally, I mean, and is he good enough to win that race, do you think? Well, he ran a time yesterday that only three new market handicap winners have, uh, have betted since it went to uh, metrics. And uh, Shane Dye, surprisingly, in his after-race speech said, this horse isn't handling the Melbourne way of going. He said if he was, he'd win by five lengths, but he said he'll learn that. So if he ever gets to learn how to race down here, what's he going to do? I think he's, he's a top chance in the Cox Plate. He's bred to run the distance. You think, I'm not putting a dampener on him, Keith. He's very good, but I just wonder. I, I really do. I think some yeah. of the older horses might handle him. Well, it remains to be seen, but I think he's outstanding, Bruce. And uh, 11 wins from 13 starts. How could you put a dampener on him? Uh, Keith, let's have a look at a graphic with Terse, and we're going to mm -hmm. explain something here. Generous is the top three-year-old in Europe. He's got one more run, the arc. He's had six wins out of ten. He's won 2.4 million Australian dollars. The opportunities in Australia are enormous for racing. Terse admittedly has had more starts, but he's won almost as much of ge as Generous. He's just starting his three-year-old campaign. The biggest races are in front of him, and Generous is at the end of his career. Wonderful opportunities for horses in this country. That's a great advertisement, those stats there, Bruce, for Australian racing. David, let's go to the Underwood Stakes. Uh, terrific race. Uh, many of the best weight-for-age performers in Australia here. Uh, Durbridge took up the front running, and that's where we picked them up. On the railway side, 900 metres out and Durbridge being best of all is Brashi. 600 metres left to go and Durbridge being joined by Dr Grace. And Dr Grace has got his head in front of Durbridge on the home turn. A length away, Prince Saliri starting to run on. Two lengths further back, a Shiver's Revenge on the outside of Citizen. They're followed by Weekend Delight. But Dr Grace has kicked away on the home turn. He's out full of running as they straighten up. And Dr Grace, two lengths to Durbridge. In third place, then Prince Saliri, Citizen down the outside, followed by Shiver's Revenge. 200 metres left to go and Dr Grace is well clear. Citizen running on strongly, followed by Prince Saliri, but Dr. Grace three links to Citizen at the 100 metre mark. Prince Saliri back behind them, Dr. Grace in front, Citizen is flying home, but Dr. Grace has got it won. Dr. Grace a half length to Citizen. Shiver's Revenge was a big run third, followed by Weekend Delight, Prince Saliri running on strongly, followed by Prince Saliri, but Dr. Grace three links to Citizen at the 100 metre mark. Prince Saliri back behind them, Dr. Grace in front, Citizen is flying home, but Dr. Grace has got it won. Dr. Grace a half length to Citizen. Shiver's Revenge was a big run third, followed by Weekend Delight, Prince Saliri. Yes, so they've already had some good duels this uh, spring, Dr Grace and Citizen Shiva's Revenge. Yes, I think uh, that Dr Grace uh, really is a genuine Caulfield Melbourne Cup's hope now. Uh, Bruce, he was most impressive. The track suited front runners and it made it difficult for Citizen... Hard to make ground. I thought both those horses from the coming stable were pretty good, weren't they? Especially Shiva's Revenge, not suited under weight for age conditions, and that was a great run for a handicapper. Well, look at the race, the George Main Stakes, and have a look at the, uh, the win by Planet Rawley yesterday.
and now they're starting to spread out as stylish century puts on the speed over the crossing at the 800 mark and it's stylish sent two and a half to flying luskin followed by dual treasures a long gap to gads hill and kinjate and then mobile peter and planet ruler as they come to the turn where stylish century is well clear led by more than two lengths on stargazer big dreams third moving up and then royal creation under pressure followed by quick score bold rancher and flying luskin at the head of the others coming over the rise his big dreams going up to them quickly and big dreams with the pull in the weights hit the front on top of the rise over stargazer who's running a bit of a race quick score further out with flying luskin and here comes planet ruler down the outside it's a uh, many one of five or six can win planet ruler on the extreme outside and quick score they've come away planet ruler going best kinjate late on the scene but planet ruler wins the george main from either quick score or kinjate Keith, he's been a tremendous horse with his two gadston wins and must now be an epsom chance planet ruler yes he has uh, bruce and uh, he is but I thought that and, and it's a big field of 20 and there is the star of the show superimpose you don't often hear a horse uh, get a big ovation from the crowd before a race but uh, he got the, the warmest reception you could imagine as he led the field onto the track everybody would love to see him win but everyone agrees he's got a, a mighty horse's job ahead of him with 61 kilos Twiglet wants to lay back a touch. A long way back, Mobile Peter followed by Royal Creation and superimpose as he was last year. Is Stone Motherless last around that first corner? A great charge for the further back, Steineck, Brunch Time, Bassie's Pride, Somalia's Rider trying to get him back on the track and then Mobile Peter. Bold Rancher cluttered up on the fence from Royal Creation, Deposition and superimpose has about two behind him as they turn for home and he's got nowhere to go coming over the rise. Planet Ruler joined on the inside by Liverstone Elaine. Liverstone Elaine takes the lead coming to the 200 mark quick score into the clear running on strongly twiglet down the outside running a big race at big odds and bold rancers into the clear now liverstone lane is the leader down the outside is twiglet look at superimpose he's come through between horses he's going to do it it's history at randwick superimpose has come from last and he wins his second epsom an amazing performance and a great ride by beadman superimpose has beaten liverstone lane bold rancher and deposition creation deposition and superimpose has about two behind he must they turn for home and he's got nowhere to go coming over the rise planet ruler joined on the inside by liverstone elaine liverstone elaine takes the lead coming to the 200 mark quick score into the clear running on strongly twiglet down the outside running a big race at big odds and bold rancers into the clear now liverstone elaine is the leader down the outside is twiglet look at superimpose he's come through between horses he's going to do it it's history at randwick superimpose has come from last and he wins his second epsom an amazing performance and a great ride by beat Superimpose has beaten Liverstone Elaine, Bold Rancher and Deposition in the photo for third and then Stylish Sensory. Listen to the crowd at Randwick. Was uh, she a magic? Quick score, every possible hope followed by Steineck and then Brunch Time, Twiglet right behind in the Northwest Airlines Epsom. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed a history-making feat at Randwick Racecourse on Epsom Day 1991 and Superimpose has forged his entry into the record books and has achieved something that we will probably never see again on the Australian turf. Two Doncasters and two Epsoms, the greatest mile horse on this course I think we've ever seen. Superimpose, in, in, we were all looking for him down the extreme outside of the track, but Darren... But he had 61 kilos, the champ, and you can't do any better than that. You should hear the crowd in the background. It's absolutely deafening as they cheer the champion. Lee Friedman's almost speechless. Uh, he's cheering his head off. Um, I'm absolutely speechless, Ken, and moved beyond words. Uh. The b uh, how far she go was anyone's guess. You can only uh, uh, not put them in and try them. And uh, as, as I said, the conditions given on that spring were dry and it suited her very well. It was only going to take one more run before racegoers around the country would notice the Kiwi mare with the funny name. And what a run it was. She went into the Turnbull Stakes a place chance by virtue of the fact that Bart Cummings trained her. She emerged a different proposition. He's kicked away Derbridge, led by more than two lengths. Ivory Way has gone. Let's elope running on on the outside very powerfully. 200 metres left to go. Derbridge in front with Let's elope challenging strongly. Let's
Let's Elope bolted to the lead now from Durbridge and then Prince Elieri and Rentino, but Let's Elope's racing away from them. Prince Elieri runs to second, but Let's Elope has scored by over two lengths. Let's Suddenly, Elope people... ...by more than two lengths. Ivory Way has gone. Let's Elope's running on on the outside very powerfully. 200 metres left to go. Durbridge in front with Let's Elope challenging strongly. Let's Elope bolted to the lead now from Durbridge and then Prince Elieri and Rentino, but Let's Elope's racing away from them. Prince Elieri runs to second, but Let's Elope has scored by over two lengths. Let's Suddenly, Elope, people were realising them. few years, it has produced some shock results. Noble Lancer is the leader, led by a length to Beowulf and Shortless, getting a lovely run on the inside of Naturalism, making ground from a long way back and feeling coming around on her. And uh, they're followed by Charleston Party and ready to explode in the centres, looking for a run, followed by Diddy Do at many chances on the home turn. Noble Lancer being tackled very quickly by Feeling Shortless there in the centre. Over on the inside, Roger John, glorious day, ready to explode under pressure, a long gap to Diddy Do it as they come down past the 200. Shortless take a lead in the Guineas and Shortless clear of Feeling. Glorious day, Naturalism for finishing fast from a long way back but Chortle is the leader with 100 metres left to go Naturalism finished very fast but Chortle too good Chortle by half length Naturalism third ready to explode glorious day fourth followed by feeling did he do it Roger John well the York uh, McLaughlin um, combination doing very well in uh, with St Jude and also this horse Chortle and the bowl rancher Keith there were 12 horses in the race uh, with the, the stylish century in and before he went out and they'd won more than 18 million dollars in prize money let's go to the Caulfield Stakes uh, Shaftesbury Avenue sitting on the pace 900 metres left to go. Palace guessed by a length to Shaftesbury Avenue. Uh, moving up just in behind them. Dr Grace followed by Shivers Revenge Citizen. Uh, a length and a half to Rough Habit is gaining ground rapidly along the inside. Followed by Durbridge. Weekend Delight. Castle Town superimpose improving. Uh, and Lee's bit as they come up in the direction of the home turn. 600 to go and Shaftesbury Avenue had moved up on the outside to take the lead from Dr Grace. Palace guest can't go on. Uh, Shivers Revenge is fourth. Just behind them Citizen followed by Rough Habit is held up for a run. Uh, right around them here comes superimpose gaining ground with every stride he's followed by Durbridge and Weekend Delight as they straighten up in the Corville Stakes now and it's Dr Grace moving up on the outside to tackle Shaftesbury Avenue clear of Citizen down the outside flying home superimpose down past the 200 metre mark Shaftesbury Avenue on the inside from Dr Grace superimpose and Citizen but it's Shaftesbury Avenue in front with 100 metres left to go he'll be too good Shaftesbury Shaftesbury Avenue by two lengths to superimpose second Citizen third Lakes now and it's Dr. Grace moving up on the outside to tackle Shaftesbury Avenue clear of Citizen down the outside flying home superimpose down past the 200 metre mark Shaftesbury Avenue on the inside from Dr. Grace superimpose and Citizen but it's Shaftesbury Avenue in front with 100 metres left to go he'll be too good Shaftesbury Shaftesbury Avenue by two lengths to superimpose second Citizen third well, we've mentioned Darren Gouch, you've got to mention Bart Cummings. That's one of the outstanding training feats. Third up to, and, and first start at 2,000 metres, that horse. One of the very great weight for age races, the Caulfield Stakes. Yes, so you go a long, long way and spend a lot of years trying to find a better field and a better race. Yes, Bruce, uh, Dr. Jeff Chapman, the Sydney trainer, said he had not seen a race with more depth in it in his experience as a trainer. That was before the race, after the race. He said there were five great horses in that race and they ran one to five. Well, I'm going to make a statement here. Well, I'm going to make a statement here. I reckon Shaftesbury Avenue is the best horse Bart Cummings has had since Galilee. Uh, his adaptability is remarkable. To think that he could win a lightning stakes and a new market and lead a new market field and now be favourite for a Cox Plate. Can you remember a horse winning the new market and the Cox Plate in the one year? Uh, no, I can't, Bruce, but I'm not going to argue with you on this occasion. What about the Beaton Brigade? Rough and the only one yeah. missing we should mention um, was uh, Surface Paradise, who Dave O'Sullivan, with uh, hindsight, made a mistake yesterday by running him in a $12,000 race on a bog track at Ellerslie. Uh, Surface Paradise ran the worst race of his career. He finished 10th, and that was his final lead-up to the Cox Plate, so he's going to have to be something super, isn't he? Good. He's, he's going to struggle now, so we really did see, I think, the Cox Plate mm. field there. Diff up. Let's elope with only 48.5 kilos, gave Bart Cummings his sixth Caulfield Cup and 21-year-old jockey Stephen King his first. But two eye-catching runs from the Melbourne Cup viewpoint from Lord Revenue fourth and Castletown fifth. Dr Grace was the best backed in the race, firming from sixes to nine to two favourite. Let's elope and Prince Alieri ran second favourites. Royal Creation best backed of the long shots, 25s into 16 to one. At the start, watch barrier four. Lord Revenue blew the start completely. He was rearing Lord Revenue. Down in four, he's missed the start hopelessly, Lord Revenue. Dr. Grace began quickly with Magnolia Hall, Royal Creation. Bold Rancher away fast, and so too Ivory Way down on the inside. 
Castletown and Just a Dancer are getting back. The Dancer are getting back in the field. Let's a late looking for a position in the middle of the field as they thunder to the post the first time now. Ivory Way to start affair, and when they race to the 800 metre mark, Ivory Way was still making play. Let's a late comes around them now, and further back is Magnolia Hall snookered on the rail. Citizens off the fence, but a long way from them. Followed by Castletown, Just a Dancer. Liverstone Elaine and Lee's bid at the 600 and Prince Tellieri raced up to Ivory Way and took the lead. Dr. Grace's third and Lord Revenor wide out, followed then by Cool Credit, Let's Elope on the outside and further back is Royal Creation and then Mantelpiece. Prince Tellieri first for home from Ivory Way, Dr. Grace in the centre, then Lord Revenor, Mantelpiece and Royal Creation from Let's Elope. Ivory Way in front, Dr. Grace coming at it, Royal Creation looking for the way clear. And wider out is Lord Revan of Prince Cellieri, but Ivory Way still in front of Royal Creation. Let's elope down the outside. Royal Creation is Ivory Way from Let's elope. It's Royal Creation, Ivory Way and Let's elope. They hit the low photo. Let's elope on the outside, perhaps, perhaps, from Ivory Way and Royal Creation. In a Dr. Grace in the centre, then Lord Revan of Mantelpiece and Royal Creation from Let's elope. Ivory Way in front, Dr. Grace coming at it, Royal Creation looking for the way clear. And wider out is Lord Revan of Prince Cellieri, but Ivory Way still in front. Of Royal Creation, Let's Elope down the outside. Royal Creation and Ivory Way from Let's Elope. It's Royal Creation, Ivory Way and Let's Elope. They hit the line photo. Let's Elope on the outside, perhaps. The Turnbull win was a creation in a three way. Melbourne's most improved jockey, Stephen King, rode a brilliant race with a light weight of 48 and a half kilos. King knew before most. Still a good weight and. Uh... The only thing is, Keith, you're looking through the records, Gurners Lane's the only horse to have won a Caulfield Melbourne Cup in the last 25 years. Mares don't have a good record in the race. So, um, Empire Rose, Light Fingers, Evening Pill, the only three in about the last 40. She's going to have to be very good to win. Here yeah, she is. I don't think she'll uh, lose on the, the uh, score of weight, so, Bruce, if she's good enough to win the Melbourne Cup, surely she can do it uh, with 51 kilos. It will be only her 13th start in the race. Uh, I thought that she may have uh, not had the experience to win the Caulfield Cup. I did overlook the fact that she's trained by Bart Cummings, I think. As, uh, he's, a, he's a master, isn't he? He's oh, a king. An absolute the four-year-olds now, four now have won 14 of the last 22 Caulfield Cups. It's a significant statistic and uh, let's elope the victor there. Keith, uh, we've talked a lot about the winners. Uh, some of the beaten brigade, oh, three I would like to discuss briefly. Lord Revenir, Castletown and Shiva's Revenge. Mm. Lord Revenir, Bruce, as you saw, missed the start by as much as four lengths. He finished fourth. Now, Grant Cooksley, who rode him, was asked, I suppose, a basic question after the race. Uh, do you think you should have won? His reply was, well, I missed the start four lengths and I was beaten by one. What do you think? Uh, so doesn't it doesn't always work out like that, though, does it? No, it doesn't. But by the same token, it was an unbelievable mm. run. Now, right behind him was um, Castletown. I thought, he's still my Melbourne Cup pick at this mm. stage. And I thought his was an outstanding performance at a distance that, and a speed. Uh, the pace of the race, it didn't suit him. He'll be better suited at Flemington and at the distance. And, and also, Shiva's Revenge, another one of Bart's. You yeah. couldn't miss it either. It either. Well, as far as pure quality is concerned, the Cox Plate is the greatest horse race in the Southern Hemisphere. And as the Mooney Valley Racing Club likes to boast, it's where legends are made. 60 years up, and I think this horse is going to fit the category perfectly. His name is Shaftesbury Avenue, and he's my selection in tomorrow's Wait for Age Championship. For the things to watch in the Cox Plate, Shaftesbury Avenue on the first turn, he almost falls. The pressure the jockeys put on him from the 800 on, did they go too early? Jockeys, uh, I mean, Citizen can particularly rough have it and superimpose even, were exposed. And this wonderful ride by Lance O'Sullivan, he just sits and sits and sits. Let's go to the Cox Plate. They're off. Great start to in the Cox Plate and down on the inside, Stylish Century, the first to jump out from Kinja Tide, ready to explode. And towards the outside, Chortle is going very fast out there as so is Shaftesbury Avenue coming down towards the judge's box and deeper on the track as Stargazer. Past the judge's box, a lap to go and Chortle goes to the front by length in advance of Stylish Century. There followed by Kinja Tate that was crowding there. Uh, Royal Creation interfered with and Shaftesbury Avenue got a slight check and the field starts to string out down the side at the 1600. A little bit on the outside and superimposed is starting to go around the next a length and a half to surface. Paradise second last and Lord Revenue last of all. Uh, down the school side, 650 to go and Stylish Century has taken the lead. Here come the challenges. Uh, Shaftesbury Avenue taking off on the outside and winding his run and so is Stargazer. Rough habit moving up just.
behind them. Citizen into the picture with a good run, ready to explode, is back behind them. And they're followed by Dr. Grace up towards the home turn. Rough Habit has dashed to the front now on the Cox Plate, rounding the turn. Rough Habit the leader, Citizen in hot pursuit. They're followed by Shaftesbury Avenue under pressure. Superimpose is finishing on well. Surface Paradise on the outside as they straighten up. Rough Habit headed by Citizen. 200 metres left to go. Citizen hit the front. Here comes Superimpose down the outside with a rattling run. And Surface Paradise is deeper on the track. Surface Paradise is swapping them. The New Zealander. Surface Paradise drawing clear. Surface Paradise has won. Superimpose second. Citizen third. Ready to explode. Close up Prince Celeri. Royal Chris. This is 15 lengths off the lead with Dr. Grace. Further back Surface Paradise and two to Lord Revan. They race to the 700 metre mark, stylish century in front. The challenges are coming now. Shaftesbury Avenue, Rough Habit coming with a sweeping run around the outside. Then Citizen Stargazer, superimposed four or five lengths off them from Kinjate. Rough Habit's burst to the front now on the outside with Citizen the Danger and superimposed is coming into the race now. Shaftesbury Avenue is behind them, struggling and ready to explode, getting out with Surface Paradise. Citizen has raced up, but here comes Super. Superimposed down the outside of the 200 metre mark and further out Surface Paradise, superimposed Surface Paradise, Surface Paradise going home better, Surface Paradise is going to win the Cox Plate Surface Paradise has won it, he's won three quarters in a run home to superimposed I think Citizen ran third from Prince Salieri then It was definitely disappointing because we thought he could win that year and when he hit the front I, I could see <coughs> that um, I could see that uh, Surface Paradise was going to beat him at least a furlong out because um, and they were too strong on the day and it was a funny feeling I was disappointed I won but I was very happy they won because they've been to the race three times and run second and uh, you know we've always had a very friendly relationship with the O'Sullivan so it was it was nice in that respect but I mean they got all the money and and the Cox Plate. Darren Gouchy said the first turn cost him a Cox Plate. I just started to sort of come in the final position. It is a bit shifty on top of the track. And he slipped and almost fell. So bad luck for Shaftesbury Avenue. Surface Paradise with Lance O'Sullivan up actually rode in the race with broken bones in his left wrist. A great Melbourne Cup trial from a superimpose, according to Darren Beedman. Well, Keith, there, there were a lot of rumours around the course yesterday. I mean, you pulled my coat and told me that maybe Shaftesbury Avenue wasn't the good thing we thought he was. What did you think of his performance? Well, Darren Gouchy, who rode him, said the near fall, and, and that's exactly what it was, going out of the straight the first time, uh, cost him any chance. It may have cost him a win. Uh, but I thought that Shaftesbury skidded and slipped on the track all the way. He was never happy, really. And uh, I thought he was fairly disappointing. And both uh, him and the one I saw last night. Yes, it's after the Cox Plate was packed full of speed. It was the AJ Moyer Stakes. Joanne was the short price favourite. It was a brilliant finish. 400 metres to go with me in front, she's flying. Led by a length to Gallipoli, Prince Joanne needs to get out. Then Hula Grey, Paclani under pressure. Well back here, Matina, Rodalva White and then wrap around. But with me, gave them the slip on the corner and she's shot away. Going for back-to-back -back Moyers, with me, free in front. Ten Joanne, peg her back, she's into the clear. With me, 100 to go, a length and a half in front. Joanne is rattling home on the outside. With me, hanging on, Joanne is lunging and just missed. With me and who's Joanne, four away, wrap 100 to go, a length and a half in front. Joanne is rattling home on the outside. With me hanging on, Joanne is lunging and just missed. With me and who's Joanne, four away, wrap around. Then and it certainly wasn't those two. There were two developed prints after that photo, but with me got the money. Yesterday, uh, the Mooney Valley. Group 1 Blue Ribbon event, 778000 in prize money. And the light is on. And they're often racing in the Victoria Derby of 1991. Rob Moore, the bolter, won the start from Explodes over on the fence and then Mango's lunch. Followed by Elaine Shadow, Kinja Tay, well back with Naturalism, still eight lengths off the lead. And they were followed by Star of the Realm, Mac Robert, My Armageddon, Natchez towards the tail and Rob Moore under the whip. 600 metres left to travel. B.O. Wolf in front by two lengths to Green Fever. Around the outside, Mango's lunch is starting to run on from time to go. Then Turgeman, our bold cruiser ready to explode. Star of the Realm behind horses and then good and fast and Kinja 400 metres to travel and the leader is B.O. Wolf, a length and a half in front, getting out and running on now was Kinja Tay, ready to explode down the outside and here comes Star of the Realm 300 metres to travel, B.O. Wolf in front the two stable mates ready to explode and Star of the Realm move up to claim him and then Kinja Tay, Star of the Realm's taking the lead, 200 metres to go in the derby ready to explode, can't match him, flashing home was Naturalism late but Star of the Realm's going to win the derby, Star of the Realm draws clear and wins two lengths Naturalism, very unlucky, second, third 
get ready to explode. Then Kinjatay followed in by B.O. Wolf and Mac Robert. Right about two and a half lengths clear of Green Fever. Good and fast time to go on the outside and right over on the outside. Mango's lunch followed by Naturalism. And they got to check the pair of them. Star of the realm and Naturalism who got badly cut off. The leader is B.O. Wolf now ready to explode into the clear. And Star of the Realm down the outside. And then time to go in a long gap to Naturalism. Star of the realm on the outside has hit the front of the derby. Star of the realm clear. Of ready to explode and Naturalism is flying home. But Star of the Realm, the leader. Naturalism on the inside, finishing very fast. But Star of the Realm has won it from Naturalism. I think there'll be a protest. Third home ready to explode. They're followed by... Well, I think we might hear a little bit more about this. I, I think we might have another protest here. Um... Uh, uh... What, any particular reason, Gary? Well, I, I just noticed that around the turn at about the 550 metre point, and we'll try and pick out naturalism. If you look into the middle of the screen, you'll be able to see a horse with green and white colours, mm -hmm. and he is exactly right in the middle of the screen. Yeah. Now, now that this they is are, where they are, they're actually bumping. They are, and uh, it goes on for quite a while. You can actually see here where Star of the Realm. Where it's arrowed, yep. Yes, it's pushing the other horse back in behind oh. the other horse. See that there? Star of the Realm nearly and, went sideways. And I there. think there'll definitely be a protest here. And well, it's still going on now, actually. Crowd with the announcement that the protest on the Hong Kong Bank Victoria Derby has been dismissed and correct weight has been notified. And uh... start finishing very fast, but Star of the Realm has won it from Naturalism. I think there'll be a protest. Third home ready to explode. They're followed by Kinjatay. Well, John Russell picked it in one. There'll be a protest. You could see the interference. Uh... Keith, they reckon Star of the Realm will be the next Shaftesbury Avenue. They love him, the John Master. David, what do you reckon? I think he's, got, he's going to be a fantastic horse. He is immature. He raced in blinkers for the first time. You say that was a gamble that paid off. But next season, I think we're going to see a great horse. And I thought so. If there was any doubt at all, it was important to pray to us and at least get a look at the stewards' film. Just a couple of things. When you watched the race uh, live, did you expect that Damien would be protesting? Yes, I did. Uh, and what was his feeling when he spoke to you when he was getting off the horse? Did he give himself a chance of getting the race? He was a bit negative about it. Can we take that one step further, if I may, Lee? Did uh, Damien not want to protest? Yeah, basically he didn't, know. OK, well, that's interesting. I mean, a huge race like that. He's a young man, though. He's not very old. He would have been the youngest jockey ever to win the derby had he won. Mm. So the, the pressure had to come from you and the connections for him to protest. That's happened before. I mean, it's been famous cases. McKinnon stakes. 2,000 metres, the light is on. Gates fly back and they're off and racing. A little bit slow to begin was El Meheb and the stable mate Ivory Wayne. Castle Town back to the rear early. Surfer half to El Meheb on the inside of Let's Elope. Two lengths to superimpose and last of all was Castle Town. Twelve lengths would cover up the field as they run inside the 700 metres mark. And stylish century in front by three quarters of a length to Majestic Boy. A length and a half away Prince Alieri. Fourth surfer's Paradise and then Salil Rouge. Behind them was Ivory Way, Ideal Centre Men. Mantelpiece next and then Let's Elope, El Meheb. And now superimpose taken to the outside from Castletown. 500 metres left to go on the McKinnon Stakes and the leader's Stiley Sentry. Looming up ominously on the outside though was Surface Paradise and then Majestic Boy. And now down the outside, Superimpose and Let's Elope. 300 metres to go, Surface Paradise in front. Here's Let's Elope and Superimpose. Let's Elope hit the front, 150 metres to go. Superimpose is trying to run it down, but the Caulfield Cup will in front, 100 out. Let's Elope in front, Superimpose can't get her. And here's the Melbourne Cup favourite, Let's Elope wins easily. Two links to Superimpose and Prince Alieri. Castletown, what a cup trial it was. Flash home for fourth. Then Ivory Way, close up Mantelpiece. They've run two minutes, 1.8, and the winner is number 14, Let's Elope. And I think without much doubt at all, the outright favourite for Tuesday's Foster's Melbourne Cup. For a win, Stylish Century being tackled by Surface Paradise is carried up quickly on the outsider. In third place, Majestic Boy, Let's Elope finishing on, and here comes Superimpose with a great run. Coming down to the 250 now, and Let's Elope. Let's Elope hit the front, tackled by Superimpose, the outsider. In behind them then is the Surface Paradise who can't go on, but it's Let's Elope. Let's Elope drawing clear in the final stage, and she's too good. Let's Elope won by a length and a half, Superimpose second. Third is Wait for Age Field. Brilliantly, and at the 200 metre mark, she He's dashed to the front. Superimpose coming out after him. Surface can't go on. Let's elope in front of Superimpose. And let's elope. Let's elope will win it by a length and a half to Superimpose second. And Only the third castle. A win very reminiscent of Empire Rose's demolition job of 1988. A drop of three and a half kilos will see her meet all but Ivory Way on better terms. And Cummings is eyeing a ninth Melbourne Cup. The um, form she showed today is equal to anything I've seen. Uh, leading up to a cup and uh, everything 
Everything going well, I think that uh, she could easily make it to nine for the, for the stable, yes. Filled Melbourne Cup double and become only the second mayor to do so. The Gadsden Red Super and Poe second. Third is Prince Silleri. Fourth home Castletown was a big run in Ivory Way and the Surface Paradise. How fast were they going at the end, Let's Elope and, uh, and Super? Well, um, one of the fellows that clocks them uh, at the races, uh, you know, has been doing it for 30 years, Des Spain, said uh, they both ran 22 and a quarter the last uh, two furlongs. So. Well, Keith, that is absolutely <laughs> flat. It was one of the most exciting... Keith, that is absolutely <laughs> flat. It was one of the most exciting races, wasn't it? Steve King brought Let's Lope back. The first comment he made to Bart Cummings was that he treated them like second raters, and Bart said they weren't, though. No, they weren't, and yeah. Bart reckons it's the best trial he's ever seen. He's coming into the program in a moment. We'll be talking to him about the Melbourne Cup. He said that in his presentation speech. It's an amazing comment. It is. I mean, he's really uh, declared her, basically, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. He's won eight, and he's declared her, basically, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. He's won eight, and he says this is the best one he's seen. So one you said along yesterday, you said this is the best, that was the best Melbourne Cup trial you've ever seen. Now, that's a big statement for a man who's won eight. Well, I can only uh, tell you what I see, and I genuinely believe that. So this is the best thing that you've had going into a Melbourne Cup, is that I what you say? Saying? Well, on what we've seen, and, uh, and the weights, and having won at weight for age, and beaten the best weight for age field for a long time, I, you know, it's a pretty strong field. Someone said, Bruce, if I may... Who do you think will win? Strong field. Someone said, Bruce, if I may... Who do you think will win? I think Let's Elope will be very hard to beat. I'll still give my horse a very good chance. And Bart, you obviously think Let's Elope, you, have you got a main danger outside your stable? <clears throat> well, yeah, bad luck. <laughs> Gee, it's a big rap, isn't it, Keith? It is too, Bruce. Where are you going, Keith? I think, I think Let's Elope will start favourite about two to one. That's short? Yeah, I do. But I'm going to have something each way, Castle Town. I've stuck with him right yeah. through. Yeah. Well, you've talked me into a Bart. I think she'll win and uh, I think... I They're off. Beautiful start of the Melbourne Cup on the outside. Ivory Way bounced out quickly with Rashik and Al Maheb. Grooming began. Mark on the fence. A link further back, Diego. Tiakau Pearl, followed by Shiva's Revenge. Superimposed further back from Grooming, followed by Pontiac Lass. Castle Town coming around the outside. Let's elope is about 15 lengths from the lead with Lord Revener. Then further back was Alpha Bell, followed by Pontiac Lass. Nay Rizzi, just to dance a second last. And Citizen is last of all in the Melbourne Cup with 700 to go. Nearing the home turn, they race in the Melbourne Cup. And over on the inside now, Ivory Way have got a glorious run up on the inside to hit the front from Rashid when they turn for home. El Maheb further out, and here's the mighty mare now. Let's elope, sweeping on them on the outside and superimposed from the pack with a great run. At the 300 metre mark, Let's elope has raced up now to Ivory Way. And Al Maheb and Magnolia Hall superimposed. But the favourite has raced away in the Melbourne Cup, it's Let's Elope. This great mare has raced away from Ivory Way, superimposed, and then Magnolia Hall and Shiva's Revenge, but Let's Elope has won the Melbourne Cup. Let's Elope by two lengths. Maybe Shiva's Revenge second, just in front of Magnolia Hall and superimposed. Out and here's the mighty mare now. Let's elope sweeping on them on the outside and superimposed from the pack with a great run. At the 300 metre mark, Let's elope has raced up now to Ivory Way and Al Maheb and Magnolia Hall superimposed. But the favourite has raced away in the Melbourne Cup. It's Let's elope. This great mare has raced away from Ivory Way, superimposed and then Magnolia Hall and Sheba's Revenge. But Let's elope has won the Melbourne Cup. Let's elope by two lengths. Maybe Sheba's Revenge second, just in front of Magnolia Hall and superimposed. Yes, uh, what a race, what a run, and uh, then the drama to follow uh, when Shane Dye said to Bart, uh, I'm going to protest, and in yes. he went. He got onto the scales <laughs> and said to the Chief Steward, should I? It is the Melbourne Cup, yeah. and Pat Lawler said, well, it's your decision, and he did, yeah. Well, it was a great run by Sheba's Revenge, back from 15s to 9s. I think most of that was doubles bookmakers backing the horse back. I mean, that also, from a Cummings point of view, was a fair training performance to get well, that horse up. Well, with the setback, missing the Saturday run, Bruce, and his, uh, as their Bart was the star of the week, wasn't he? A ninth Melbourne Cup win, Bruce, and a fifth Quinella, magic. I don't think uh, many people realise that uh, we won't see this again. I mean, no, no one will win nine Melbourne Cups this year. Bart or Quinella at five times. It's unique. Yeah. He, uh... Revenge, let's elope, hit the front of the cup, 300 metres to run. She'd proven herself a champion stayer with four straight wins, but Bart Cummings knew she could prove herself a champion over all distances.
She had the will to win. Given on a dry track, I'd say she was. Lalani was very good and light fingers, but they could handle both. But uh, on a dry track, I think Richard Lope was unbeatable. There's no doubt he should have won Shiver's Revenge. Um, like I said, like I was bolting at the 500 metres looking to get out and I got out. She came up and around and pushed me back in. And like Stephen King got a couple of months for it, I think. And, um, uh, and um, uh, the amount of ground I took off her the last furlong was incredible. And he really hit the line and uh, Bart didn't want me to protest when I hopped off. And of course I wanted to and I wasn't going to and I was. I still believe he should have got the protest, but of course it was a Melbourne Cup and it's very hard to overturn Melbourne Cups when you've got beat by two or three lengths. And Big Colony was the first to jump out from Fanning. 850 to go on the cup and Stylish Century still by length to White Hill Centre Man. Around them goes our men of all cool credit and they're packing up and notwithstanding as they come up towards the home turn, 500 to run. Stylish Century the leader about to be tackled by Hill Centre Man and Rashik has broken down. Rashik has broken down badly at the top of the straight there, homeward bound. 300 to go, Stylish Century shackled by Ideal Centre Man. Mantelpiece the outside running on very well and over on the inside is Big Colony is coming home strongly princess pushy finishing well uh, big colony mantelpiece stylish century big colony on the inside stylish century and mantelpiece big colony on the inside as the leader big colony and stylish century they hit the line big colony i think from stylish century with mantelpiece third uh, they're followed by princess pushy then came our man of all ideal center man yeah well what an exciting finish let's watch that again bc the picture there it looks like big colony has nosed out stylish century in the Sandown cup let's go reflect on better loose enough because uh, he made the headlines all through the week his return to racing had been compared with tullocks in the early 60s and some of the other great racehorses have come back he went to flemington yesterday he had lots of fans he didn't win but i don't think he disappointed either Better Loosen Up was the star amongst the seven starters, which included the Melbourne Cup runner-up Shiver's Revenge and the above-average sprinter Marla Storea. The race accelerated from the 800 metres, with Damien Oliver making a daring dash for home on Storea. And now Storea sprinted fast to hit the front and rounding the turn. Storea making every post. A winner has kicked away about four to five lengths to specific Prince and Kadim. Shivers revenge over on the inside and deeper on the track. Better loosen up is starting to wind up. Storea's got a big break on them down past the 400 metre mark. Better loosen up's about four lengths behind it. Shivers revenge followed by Kadim. Storea well clear with about 300 metres left to go from Better loosen up followed by Kadim who was checked. Shivers revenge is finishing fast down the outside. It's Storea starting to weaken. Shivers revenge is picking him up rapidly better loose and you can't go on shivers revenge hit the front shivers revenge shivers revenge moved away to win by a length and a half storaya better loose well clear with about 300 meters left to go from better loose and up followed by kadim who was checked shivers revenge is finishing fast down the out so it's storaya starting to weaken shivers revenge is picking him up rapidly better loose and you can't go on shivers revenge hit the front shivers revenge shivers revenge moved away to win by a length and a half storaya better loose and up as third followed by big colony whilst there was a sense of disappointment surrounding Better Loosen Up's defeat. He'd won his last seven races prior to breaking down. David Hayes and Mick Dipman, who was having his first ride on the gilding, remain optimistic about the future. I think he'll come back. I don't think there's any worries about that. You know, see, he's a long time out of racing and... Challenging uh... Hayes at the moment very strongly. Uh, let's elope versus Shiver's Revenge. Fill us in, you know the two of them. Who's, who's the best? Well, uh, today or yesterday, what we've seen Shiver's Revenge do, I mean, Let's Elope's going to have to be very good uh, to uh, keep up with him now. She is. And she's proved that in the Melbourne Cup. And Dry track, I'd say she was. Lalani was very good and light fingers, but they could handle both. But uh, on a dry track, I think Let's Elope was unbeatable. But still campaign king by two and a half, Dr. Grace. Prince Elieri now, and here's Let's Elope starting to wind up strongly at the 200 campaign cream. King is grabbed by Prince Elieri, and now Let's Elope is coming home. Prince Elieri via neck. Let's Elope with big bounds is coming after him. Let's Elope and Prince Elieri. Prince Elieri has his nose in front. She bobbed the mare. Dr. Grace still lands. Campaign king about to be tackled by... Let's elope, ranged up on the outside to tackle Prince Saleri, who won't give in. Prince Saleri still the leader. Let's elope, getting to win. Let's elope, Prince Saleri. Let's elope on the outside. Might have just beaten Prince Saleri in third place, Brass Sheep. Yes, there's a lot of uh, speculation while we waited for the outcome of the protest. Let's elope, now heading for the Australian Cup. And then the BMW in Sydney. That's the same path that last year's Derby winner, Star of the Realm, is taking. And Stephen. Uh... Welcome back.
Uh, Sir Shiva's revenge with a flashing run, just like he did in the Chester Manifold. As they approach the home turner at the 650, Shivano missed by a length and a half. Dr. Grace is close handy. Two lengths away, then Stylish Century there, followed by Better Loosen Up and Shivers Revenge as they straighten up with 500 to go. Shivano miss leads them into the straight, but a little over a length. Dr. Grace challenging on the outside. Better Loosen Up, followed by Stylish Century and Shivers Revenge is pulled to the outside and starting to wind up. About 350 metres left to go. Shivano misses the leader. Dr. Grace and Shivers Revenge down the outside, starting to come after them. Better Loosen Up can't go up as they run down. With the 150 to go, Shivano miss. Here comes Shivers Revenge on the outside and Dr. Grace the centre. Shivano misses the leader. Shivers Revenge coming after it. It's going home the better. Shivers Revenge too good. Shivers Revenge by three quarters of a length. Shivano miss and Dr. Grace. Metres left to go. Shivano misses the leader. Dr. Grace and Shivers Revenge down the outside. Starting to come after them. Better loosen up. Can't go up as they run down with 150 to go. Shivano miss. Here comes Shivers Revenge on the outside and Dr. Grace the centre. Shivano misses the leader. Shivers Revenge coming after it. It's going home the better. Shivers Revenge too good. Shivers Revenge by three quarters of a length. Shivano missing. Dr. Grace close up third. Well, he's equal favourite now. Two to one with Let's Alert for the Australian Cup. If she's successful at Caulfield next week, she may run favourite. Uh, Shivers Revenge, of course, will now run in the Australian Cup. And his only danger, to my mind, is the stable mate. Let's Alert. Uh, on Better Loosen Up, I, I really think that his last in that small field yesterday has left the Hayes camp with decision time. I think there are only two options rest or retire he can't go on the way he's right final card they're off now and a wrap around look to jump out pretty well towards the center raw talent was away quickly on the inside and street roughing and showing smarrett team are over on the inside raw talent and they were being followed by scalacci final card is next down the outside king marauding there followed by a wrap around and further back is sonic express a long gap to you matilla followed by sarah fox and jack pill a long way back with planet ruler 250 to go now here's final card and scalacci scalacci's raced up to hit the front coming down past the 200 and kicked away from street ruffian final card finishing on King Marauding and wrap around from a long way back and you Matilla finishing very fast but shalachi has got it one. Scalacci goes to the line to win it well by a length and a half. You Matilla wrap arounds run third. His lightning stakes win came at just his fourth race start and his first in open company. King Marauding under pressure, 2.50 out and Scalacci raced up to Street Ruffin and took the lead and then Noble Lancer. Final card can't go on and wrap around trying to get into it, followed by King Marauding but Scalacci well clear. Wrap around finishing well with Umatilla on the outside but the brilliant Scalacci wins at a length and a half. We had a very big opinion of him right from the start and uh, he won his most... Well, extraordinary to think that this horse had only had three starts prior to yesterday at weight for age and was able to run away from uh, top-class horses when they were running 55.9. Was... Hey, Lee, um, have we seen the new Manicato, Scalacci, after yeah. the race? This is an enormous statement. Yesterday when Lee was interviewed after Scalacci winning the Lightning, he said this horse reminds me a lot of Manicato. You can't be serious. Manicato won five William Reeds, four Futurities. was one of the all-time greats. I think I'm going to lift her regret <laughs> that statement somehow. But, um, no, this horse is very exciting, though. I mean... You know, having his fourth run in the race yesterday and winning a lightning stakes that easily, it's, uh, you know, he's got unlimited potential. The thing that was important after Italy's leading striker from the 1990 World Cup, uh, Bruce, and I think there's, there are many goals ahead of this fellow too, Salachi. Good pun there, Keith. Um, after the race, Dr. Jim... Let's have a look. Dr. Grace, let's elate this thrilling jewel in the St. George. Prince Aleri being hard ridden at the 600 where Shivano Miss was the leader by a length and advance of Dublin Lad and Dr Grace Brashia lets elope second last and Prince Aleri last of all as they round the home turn the pressure's on 450 left to go Shivano Miss is being tackled by Dr Grace and here comes the big mare lets elope around the outside Brashia is back behind them Prince Aleri can't go on 300 metres left to go now and Shivano Miss is tackled by Dr Grace and lets elope is down the outside and then Prince Aleri down inside the final 200 Dr. Grace on the outside, Shivano Miss and Let's Elope is joining in. Dr. Grace is the leader close to home. Let's Elope the outside, they hit it. Let's Elope. Let's Elope by ahead on the line to Dr. Grace with Shivano Miss third. Still then, Shivano Miss fighting it out from Let's Elope, who has to find something with courage on the outside. Still Dr. Grace in front. Let's Elope tries hard. She's coming home. She'll get there again. Let's Elope right on the post. Nailed Dr. Grace. Another courageous win at the 400. Miss third. Keith, we were talking to Jeff Fennick about this long unbeaten run he's got at the moment. I mean, Let's Elope has been beaten, but she's building up and building up six in a row. Um, goes into the Australian Cup now against Shivers Revenge. They were two to one equal favourites before that race yesterday. Which way are you leaning? I'm sticking with Let's Elope at this stage, Bruce. I think only uh, Rain could beat her. She's a duffer on the wet where Shivers Revenge likes it. 
Uh, there's probably against you here, but Shivers will beat her in the Australian Cup. All right, shilling on the side there. We're dead. You'd still have a shilling too, I bet you. <laughs> Let's go to the Oakley Plate, the race for the fastest horses in Australia. And Scalacci, well, he won the Lightning last week. The Oakley now, two-thirds of the way, and will he win the Newmarket? Here's the Oakley. A bit further back as Joanne being hard ridden, did he do it? Uh, and then Sonic Express, a length and a half to Umatilla, who's well back, followed by Blue Boss Napoleon. Uh, Zephyrata second last as they make the home turn, and Grandiose is last as they straighten up where Noble Lancer is the leader. Scalacci down the outside, running on pretty well, followed by My Satin Star. Dark Bow is back behind the Mr. Cube from a long way back at all arch here. Scalacci on the outside has taken the lead with a hundred to go from Noble Lancer, and Dark Bow running on well, followed by Mr. Cube. But Scalacci's in front, uh, and Scalacci, here comes Dark Bow. Too late, Scalacci's won it. Dark Bow is second, Dapper's Hope is third. To the leader in the straight with Scalacci coming out after to the 200. Then Dark Bow and Mr. Cube followed by All Archie. But Scalacci has taken the lead from Noble Lancer with 100 metres to go. The Flying Greys dash to the front out of the whip. Dark Bow's finishing well. Scalacci in front of Dark Bow and Scalacci wins at a half length. Dark Bow. Scalacci's cup is third. Well, Damien Oliver was going to ride Dark Bow at one stage because he didn't know Scalacci was running and he's jumped onto Scalacci. Joanne's interesting. The first time she hasn't started a favourite in a race, she doesn't fire as well in Melbourne. No, she carried a kilo more than... But he might be in the placid art class because he's two-thirds of the way to the Triple Crown. Yes, only one horse has ever won the Triple Crown. That was placid art. Uh, so he's two-thirds of the way there. I spoke uh, this morning... I'm a bit... I've got a feeling that you think you'll get run over in the new market. No, I've got a... I hate to say it, I tend to agree with you. I've got a feeling they might get to him in the last 100 metres. Yeah, well, if we're agreeing... Race start. Then, in his first test against the older Gallopers, he again collected Group 1 glory. At the moment, it's Captain Cook in front, Solbert, Lador, Lady Rua, Racuna, my only vice, Nelson Valentine, and here comes Viander Cross. What a run. He's got to the front, Viander Cross from Captain Cook, running on my only vice, and he is overwhelmed coming into it. It's all over. Viander Cross from overwhelmed, and Viander Cross streets them. Second home over by the my only vice, Nelson Valentine, and here comes Viander Cross. What a run. He's got to the front, Viander Cross from Captain Cook, running on my only vice, and he is overwhelmed coming into it. It's all over. Viander Cross from overwhelmed, and Viander Cross streets them. Second home over. By the time Viander Cross... The second leg of the double, the Futurity Stakes. Wrap around and Jack Pill behind them trying to get runs and Planet Ruler putting it a run but he's way off the track when they turn for home. In the straight, 300 metres to go, Storea. Dapper's Hope, wrap around behind them. Planet Ruler down the outside with a late run and they're followed further back by Citizen Mannerism. Planet Ruler's got his head in front of Storea with 150 to go. Jack Pill getting up on the inside. Mannerism getting out late. Planet Ruler in front. Mannerism flying over the top of it and Mannerism gets up to win. A dashing the outside with a late run and there followed further back by Citizen Mannerism. Planet Ruler's got his head in front of Storea with 150 to go. Jack Pill getting up on the inside. Mannerism getting out late. Planet Ruler in front. Mannerism flying over the top of it and Mannerism gets up to win. A dashing performance by the Lee Friedman trained Mannerism starting at 12 to 1 ahead of Planet Ruler at 20s and race favourite Wraparound at 5 to 2. Handicap Bart Cummings sent out the favourite Western Chorus. Bart's our guest this morning, uh, but uh, Bart was denied a ninth win in the Newmarket Handicap. It was won for the first time by Lee Friedman. What went wrong with your mare? <coughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the answer, Bart? No, not really. But um, I think the winner's too good. Winner's too good. It was the first. Racing, Western Chorus away quickly. Scalacci came out a little awkwardly and gave Noble Lancer a bump at the start. Dark Bow away from the field is Dark Bow over on the outside and then Grandiose, who's well back. Second last year, Matilla and Sonic Express. 500 left to go now. Street Ruffian, the leader, about a length in front. Noble Lancer coming after it quickly and Western Chorus along the rail. Scalacci, Damien Oliver about to give the grey full ball on the outside as they race to the 300 metre mark. Noble Lancer, the leader. Scalacci's coming after it quickly western chorus has dropped out quickly though inside quickly though inside the 200 scalacci got to noble lancer yuma tiller's running on okay but the gray flash scalacci's put a gap in them yuma tiller's finishing quickly on the outside and then storea but scalacci wins the magnificent treble so you clay's going strong second is storea a half length away and yuma tiller is third and they were followed then by street ruffian back behind them the lancer and western chorus driving up along the inside followed by elise and scalacci is joining in down the outside with a good run, 300 metres left to go.
go. Noble Dancer about to be tackled by Scalacci here. They've got away by a length and a half. Street Ruffy and Yuma Tiller. Western Chorus, nowhere to go. Scalacci's taken the lead with 100 metres left to go. Hands and heels by Oliver. Finishing on Yuma Tiller. Scalacci is the leader close to home. Yuma Tiller and finishing very fast to Raya, but Scalacci for the new market. Scalacci by a half length to Raya, third Yuma Tiller. Fantastic performance by Scalacci. Uh, that was only his sixth start in a race and uh, he equalled the record set by Placid Ark in 1987 of winning the Lightning States, the Oakley Plate and the Newmarket Handicap. And it has not been since Wakeful in 1901, uh, since a horse had had so few starts won the Newmarket. Wakeful was having only her fourth. Let's have a look. As good as anything he's ever trained after her outstanding win in today's Australian Cup at Flemington. Let's Elope came from last to thrash stable mate Shiver's Revenge, giving Cummings his 10th Australian Cup victory. As has always been the case as Revenge, both prepared by Bart Cummings. In the ring, punters preferred Shiva's Revenge, sending him out at five to four with Let's Elope at twos. The cup winner raced at the tail of the field until they straightened, but then produced a sprint which will long be remembered. At the 400 metre mark, Prince Salieri went up on the outside to tackle Fire Oak Stylish Century. Shiva's Revenge starting his run and here she comes. Here comes the mare, Let's Elope. She's swapping them on the outside at the 300 metre mark. The Melbourne Cup winner, Let's Elope, has limbed up and taken the lead. Shiva's Revenge battling back on the inside and then Prince Salieri, but the body mare's drawing away to the roars of the crowd. Let's Elope coming away for a brilliant win in the Australian Cup. Let's Elope trots in. Three lengths, Shiva's Revenge. Two lengths to Prince On returning to scale, Let's Elope's Revenge. Two lengths to Prince On returning to scale, Let's Elope was greeted with an ovation only afforded to champions. After victory number 10 in this race, Bart comes. I suppose I have to admit that she's probably one of the best I've trained after today. Um, uh, her record stood for 30 years and she's equal that. And um, beat the best field in the land at a mile and a quarter. Yes. And look at Let's Elope with a magnificent run. Let's Elope on the outside going up to hit the front past the 200 from Shepherd's Revenge who's coming at it. Then Prince Saliri followed by Dr. Grayson, Big Colony, but it's Let's Elope for the Honda Australian Cup. And she wins it brilliantly. Let's Elope by three lengths. The Second incredible performance brought a slight smile from the boss and from the punters. Let Foreman's brought a slight smile from the boss and from the punters. Let's elope starting two to one from Shiver's Revenge, five to four favourite tribute to a horse that had equaled Sky High's 2,000 metre record from 30 years ago. Well, it's pretty hard to imagine them do these things until, they, until you see it happen. And uh, that was a great race to watch, I tell you. Beedman off, Beedman offered the highest great praise. Time. I know why I haven't been able to beat her in the past. <laughs> She's got a Ferrari engine. Let's elope on five to four, but the outcome was the same. Here's the concluding stages. On the outside, let's elope going up to Shiva's Avenge and Prince Salieri followed by Dr. Grace. But the great mare's taken the lead now. Let's elope with 150 to go. She's drawing away. This super awesome mare. Let's elope three in front holding Shiva's Avenge and Prince Salieri. A magnificent Australian Cup to let's elope by four lengths. Shiva's Revenge second a length away, third Prince Salieri. Today's, today's win has taken Let's Elope's career earnings to the three million dollar mark. The classy mare started at two to one. Shiva's to the lead, Shiva's Revenge a length and a half behind. And here comes the big mare. Let's Elope is winding up powerfully. She's racing up on the outside to Prince Salieri. Shiva's Revenge in the centre is not as good as this mare. No way, she's racing away. The champion mare's racing clear. Let's Elope from Shiva's Revenge. And Let's Elope dominates the Australian and cup and wins it by three and a half. Shiva's the mayor had her problems from that point, but she'd clearly established herself as a champion with seven straight wins against the best horses in the land. Under all conditions... Up in Sydney, the highlight was the grand win of champion Super Impose in the Group 1 Chipping Norton Stakes. We picked them up at the turn with Super last. On the outside is about to take off. Darren Beedman searching for runs between horses on Superimpose, as he did in the Epsom. Coming over the rise now, Shivano Miss not handling the way of going, has drifted right out wide, is still in front of Quick Score. Kinjate Beedman's back to the fence on Superimpose, and further out, My Eagle Eye. Quick Score, the leader over Kinjate. Superimpose starting to hit top gear on the inside rail. Superimpose is bursting through. I think he's got him. He's done it again, doesn't he? Love the Randwick mile. Superimpose wins the Chipping Norton. 
quick score second in third place horses on superimposed as he did in the Epsom coming over the rise now Shivano miss not handling the way of going has drifted right out wide is still in front of quick score Kinjate Beedman's back to the fence on superimposed and further out my eagle eye quick score the leader over Kinjate superimposed starting to hit top gear on the inside rail superimposed is bursting through I think he's got him he's done it again doesn't he love the Randwick mile superimposed wins the chipping Norton quick score second in third places Kinjate White Super's record at Randwick and his mile credentials are impeccable but this was his first win there at Wait for Age Hang up, hang up the two East Canterbury Guineas one of the traditional lead up races to the AJC Derby to be run on April the three lengths on my Diamond Rouge followed by Big Dreams Naturalism having a pretty hard run Western Showdown losing ground Viander Cross is coming into it strongly a gap then to ready to explode under pressure followed by Heroicity taken away from the fence but giving these leaders a big start as they come around the corner where Silk Ali is the leader over Big Dreams Naturalism and Viander Cross down the extreme outside coming to the 200 mark and wide out in it's Viander Cross getting to the lead over Naturalism. They've shaken off big dreams. Viander Cross has got the better of uh, Naturalism close to home and is racing away and scores a top win in the Guineas. Viander Cross came away to win it a, a bit more than a length to Naturalism. Third's pretty t over big dreams. Naturalism and Viander Cross down the extreme outside. Coming to the 200 mark and wide out. It's Viander Cross getting to the lead over Naturalism. They've shaken off big dreams. Viander Cross has got the better of uh, Naturalism close to home and is racing away and scores a top win in the Guineas. The Ander Cross came away to win it a, a bit more than a length to Naturalism. Third's pretty tight. Heroicity, I think, just in front of Big Dreams. Close up Sub Zero. Mac Robert, then ready to explode. Winner and an effortless winner too is the Ander Cross to pay odds of 850 and 280. As we get to Eden Park, go to the Ranvet Stakes. Let's have a look at Rough Habit, and Jimmy does have a good look around on the turn. Just a dancer on the outside of Superimpose. He's off on Rough Habit. He's sweeping around them three wide up towards the lead. Then My Eagle Eye, followed by Castle Town, Star of the Realm. Superimpose into the clear now. He'll be taken to the outside as they turn the corner. And Just a dancer last as they straighten. Stylish Sensory led. Dr. Grace is after him. Rough Habit is looming to them on the outside. He's got them covered in Cassidy's confident. Rough Habit has raced to the lead from Dr. Grace, Stylish Sensory. Then My Eagle Eye. Cassidy's looking for Superimpose, but he's nowhere to be seen. Rough Habit is in front. Now he's got to go for him. Here's the danger. My Eagle Eye. My Eagle Eye is coming at Rough Habit. Rough Habit still in front. My Eagle Eye is coming home the best on the outside. They hit it. I think My Eagle Eye in a boil over. My Eagle Eye by a nose to Rough Habit is in front. Now he's got to go for him. Here's the danger. My Eagle Eye. My Eagle Eye is coming at Rough Habit. Rough Habit still in front. My Eagle Eye is coming home the best on the outside. They hit it. I think My Eagle Eye in a boil over. My Eagle Eye by a nose to Rough Habit. Styly Sensory then Dr. Grey, star of the realm, superimposed, didn't do much in the run home. Well, make up your own mind there on Rough Habit, whether or not he was completely genuine in the run up the straight, superimposed. And Cassidy, Keith, uh, a great rider, but uh, gee, he'd have a sore neck this morning. He's had 48 looks in the straight on Rough Habit. Overconfident? Mm, I don't know whether it was overconfidence. Max would have a better idea of that, Bruce, but uh, I thought Rough Habit, uh, and uh, if Max is using terms in brackets, doggedly, uh, or dogged it. Uh, rough habit he didn't seem to want to go on with it to my mind don't think he did superimpose can he still win the doncaster that's the big question superimpose can win the doncaster but um, excuse my sarcasm but superimpose is a fair weather champion if ever, everything breaks superimpose's way I he can win it out max he's won two epsoms and two doncasters he's one of the great horses yes but bruce i'm trying to point out that that everything went his way but now, when 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 there is a little bit of but now, when, when, when there is a little bit of moisture on the track and he gets his footsies a bit damp, he oh, can't put his out. best foot forward. <laughs> I now, don't we, believe the this. The superimposed, Bruce, that you saw yesterday, was that the superimposed at Randwick last start? And also, you'll say he's a better horse at Randwick than he is at Rose Hill. He won the, the Rand Vet 12 months ago at Rose Hill. Yeah, but he did run last in the BMW last year and then came out and won the that's Doncaster at his next stop. I am, that's what I'm saying. I've never known... An a horse you cannot take lightly, but I've got Viander Cross number one in the AJC Dark at this stage okay and why not because his run yesterday was outstanding but congratulations to naturalism in his first group one success let's go to the rose hill guineas 
And Dark Tsar is the leader. My Wander and Star second in first. Viander Cross, hard ridden, is going four and five deep right around the field. He's going to have to put up one hell of an effort to win the guineas. They've got him right off the track as they near the turn. Dark Tsar is the leader coming to the corner over My Wander and Star. And then Beowulf Naturalism followed by Sub Zero, Kulong Road, and Viander Cross couldn't possibly get any wider. Straightening up for the run home, Dark Tsar. My Wander and Star, Heroicity putting in a dash. Here comes Naturalism and Viander Cross cross under the whip is grinding away on the outside naturalism took the lead past the 200 mark from viander cross getting into second place and is trying desperately to pick up the leader naturalism stopping viander cross he's as game as ned kelly but he can't reach naturalism naturalism won the guineas by a head to viander cross the best thing beaten i think i've ever seen in the guineas Viander Cross couldn't possibly get any wider. Straightening up for the run home, Dark Tsar. My Wander and Star, Heroicity putting in a dash. Here comes Naturalism. And Viander Cross under the whip is grinding away on the outside. Naturalism took the lead past the 200 mark from Viander Cross getting into second place and is trying desperately to pick up the leader. Naturalism stopping Viander Cross. He's as game as Ned Kelly, but he can't reach Naturalism. Naturalism won the Guineas by a head to Viander Cross. The best thing beaten I think I've ever seen in the Guineas. Well, that's what Johnny Tapp had to say. Uh, Viander Cross Naturalism throwing star of the realm. The derby is going to be very exciting. Skylock. Viander Cross, um, gee, that's the best thing beaten you've ever seen. That was a very poor ride, wasn't it? Oh, I wouldn't be too severe on the rider, and this certainly isn't, uh, shall we say, I'm not putting cushions under riders who, who ride bad races, but everybody uh, at Rose. Who Naturalism looked a shade unlucky in the, uh, the previous time they clashed in the Canterbury Guineas. Now the Rose Hill Guineas has gone to Naturalism. You're feeling, Keith, from an AJC derby point of view, well, he's racing well. He had Randwick that Viander Cross would have his measure, but I think that Star of the Realm. The market for the Golden Slipper. Clan O'Sullivan is five to four favourite. Burst at five to one. Of course, Reva Diva not running. Clocker, some doubt about her at seven. To Off and running in the two, he's Golden Slipper. Tennessee Mist is a clear last to leave the starting gate. Clear half. First turn. Tennessee Mist is making up ground. Yachty is out very deep. Burst is cluttered up between horses. Back with her, Chinquillo. A long gap to Dams are dark. And then Sparky Miss, followed by Merry Shade and Sir T, is absolute last as they near the corner. Into the straight, Clan O'Sullivan with the inside running, just led Loving Cup, King Marauding three deep, and Clocker right off the track. Vertingly on the fence behind those, followed by Fasil and Burster starting to weave between them, but Clan O'Sullivan kicked away. Clan O'Sullivan exploded clear of Loving Cup at the 200 mark. Burst is about to run into third place and she's finishing on gamely. So is Ken Thayer. Clan O'Sullivan is shortening stride. Loving Cup and Burst down the outside is rocketing to the line. Burst has swapped Clan O'Sullivan. Four straight for Shane Dye. Burst got up to beat Clan O'Sullivan. Loving Cup is third. An exploded clear of Loving Cup at the 200 mark. Burst is about to run into third place and she's finishing on gamely. So is Ken Thayer. Clan O'Sullivan is shortening stride. Loving Cup and Burst down the outside is rocketing to the line. Burst has swapped. Clan O'Sullivan, four straight for Shane Dye. Burst got up to beat Clan O'Sullivan. Loving Cup is third. And Burst's win continues the success story uh, for uh, Shane Dye, for Clary Connors, and also for horses that have won the Goldens. Shane Dye is undoubtedly a freak rider. His performance in winning four consecutive Golden Slippers is just remarkable. And he's got this big run. Let's go to the derby. We'll show the head on, and then we'll uh, talk about the future for both these outstanding three-year-olds. To the top turn now in the derby, and the leader is my examination. Further back, Cabora, followed by Skylock, and then Stargate, Tar Heel Boy, Cavalieri, well back. So is Viander Cross as they come to the turn. He's spotting the mustard. In fact, he's not going well at all, Viander Cross. Star of the Realm is a mile back, and so is Intermusician as they come to the turn, and they're packed up very tightly where Shane Dye goes to the lead on Cool Affair to be tackled in turn by Coolong Road and Zamination. Three wide on the outside, straightening up. Further back is Naturalism, Heroicity now pop the question further out Skylock is starting to run on strongly as they top the hill where Coolong Road got to the lead Mick Dittman is squeezing through on naturalism Zaminations there with heroicity and here comes Viander Cross Viander Cross down the outside is motoring home naturalism the leader Viander Cross inch by inches wearing him down naturalism still in front he ran out near the line but naturalism wins at a half length of Viander Cross in a bumping finish Top the hill where Coolong Road got to the lead. Mick Dittman is squeezing through on naturalism. Zaminations there with heroicity. And here comes Viander Cross. Viander Cross down the outside is motoring home. Naturalism the leader. Viander Cross inch by inches wearing him down. Naturalism still in front. He ran out near the line, but naturalism wins at a half length of Viander Cross in a bumping finish. 
Well, John Tapp said it was a bumping finish. Uh, we'll show you the head-on in just a moment, and you'll be surprised. At but watch this. Runs out quickly here, and it runs right up alongside Vianda Cross and takes him out towards the end. But uh, I think Max and Keith have both explained that it was a little too close to the post, but he did run about very badly oh, in the last little bit. Interestingly, the bookmakers in Melbourne yesterday bet good odds naturalism first past the post in the protest. The margin, Bruce, was three quarters of a length. The interference was 60 metres from the post, and bookmakers bet even money after the race about naturalism retaining it. And Rick, would have you taken the even money naturalism after uh, hearing the stewards' inquiry? Oh, after hearing the stewards' inquiry, uh, I would have taken the, uh, the even money naturalism, not only with all that I have, but all that you and Keith have too. <laughs> uh, there wasn't much chance it would be upheld. Uh, Keith mentioned there... Do you prefer, if we're talking Cox Plates, Caulfield Cups, Melbourne Cups, whatever, which of these two horses do you think will go on in the spring and be one of the stars of racing? I think they'll both go on. Uh, naturalism loves the valley. He's being set for the Cox Plates, maybe the Cups as well. It's probably... Uh, star back in 1977. To the Queen Elizabeth Stakes, the favourite was Rough Habit, but most punters were hoping for Superimpose. Superimpose taking a while to get going. Rough Habit sprinted quickly at the 200 mark and raced about a half in front of My Eagle Eye, and then Aquidity and Superimpose can't win. Rough Habit starting to draw right away in the last bit. My Eagle Eye running a sterling Sydney Cup trial, but Rough Habit too good and wins the Queen Elizabeth from My Eagle Eye. Another Group 1 success for top of the ground. He goes on to Brisbane where he's sure to be a major player. To the Galaxy, Hugh Clay's the odds on favourite but Scalacci again in rare form. Scalacci trying to bullock out of a pocket, Street Ruffian's gone and then Yellow Lad and Friends Venture, Hugh Clay's going strongly at the 200 mark, Scalacci is coming after him now, Dittman goes for the whipper, Scalacci ranges alongside, old Friends Venture is rattling down the outside but Scalacci shot clear close to home and he's drawing away and is going to win well, Scalacci wins the Galaxy. Scalacci is now, Scalacci wins the galaxy. Scalacci is now upstage Placid Arc, winning the big three in Melbourne, the Lightning Stakes, the Oakley Plate, the Newmarket and the Galaxy in Sydney in the one season. The all-age stakes, we were talking about Jim Cassidy just a moment ago. Keith mentioned his vigour at the end of this race. It's one of the best finishes you'll ever see. Let's go to the all-aged. And coming around the turn, Big Dreams as the leader. Old Roll in second place being niggled a bit now as they turn Pabbit as they come over the rise. Big Dreams the leader from Old Roll who's under a bit of pressure coming over the hill. Quick scores in on the fence. Surface Paradise is floundering a bit as they put on the pace and Rough Habit on the outside is going as well as Surface Paradise at the moment. Big Dreams though. Big Dreams going strongly at the 100 mark. He's still in front. Rough Habit is motoring now. Quick score diving through in the middle. It's Big Dreams hard up against the inside rail. Quick score in the centre. Rough Habit out under the arches you've never seen a finish like it they're all across the tree at the hundred mark he's still in front rough habit is motoring now quick score diving through in the middle it's big dreams hard up against the inside rail quick score in the center rough habit out under the arches you've never seen a finish like it they're all across the track and rough habit got it uh, he's won races now from 1200 to 2400 he's won 18 out of 34 it's got a remarkable record that race was 1600 yesterday but keith six of his wins have been at 1400 meters He's a versatile, this is the same horse that ran fifth in the Japan Cup last year. He, he is a decent horse, isn't he? He's a very good horse and uh, he'll clash again with quick... They there yesterday with the Castlemaine 10,000, a terrific finish with Rough Habit looking for a terrific finish, the Castlemaine 10,000. By G, this is a big battle as they come down the side. Magic Deal is just in front. Whale of a Night is having a crack at him on the outside. Bounder players moved up and so is Sonic Express. Four of them stretched across the track as they run to the corner. Barossa Boy is a length and a half away. Fifth followed by Gilded Queen. Rough Habit starting to go forward now. He's midfield about four deep as they straighten up. 400 metres to go on the 10,000. Bounder play loomed up on the outside of Sonic Express. Whale of a Night is still there. Gilded Queen. Rough Habit hooked to the extreme outside. Kinjit He's not getting a lot of room. Friends Venture and now Barossa Boy. Barossa Boy is bursting through, but look at the Kiwi go. Rough Habit, the king of the Kiwis. He's loomed up on the outside to hit the lead. Barossa Boy is chasing him now. Barossa Boy grabbed Rough Habit. They hit it, and Barossa Boy has got up to win the 10,000. He beat Rough Habit. Megs Ego third. There, Gilded Queen. Rough Habit hooked to the extreme outside. Kinjate's not getting a lot of room. Friends Venture and now Barossa Boy. Barossa Boy is bursting through, but look at the Kiwi go. Rough Habit, the King of the Kiwis. He's loomed up on the outside to hit the lead. Barossa Boy is chasing him now. Barossa Boy grabbed Rough Habit. They hit it. And Barossa Boy has got up to win the 10,000. He beat Rough Habit. Megs Ego third.
Yes, a very good call there, Wayne. What's happening with uh, Rough Habit? Wayne, what's happening with uh, Rough Habit? Uh, there's some thought that he might run tomorrow on the Gold Coast in the Hollandale Cup. Yes, well, he's in a, a $100,000 race at the coast tomorrow. It's raining here in Brisbane at the moment, Bruce, and conditions are going to suit him now. Nine. Bruce, and conditions are going to suit him now. 19 out of 38, Barossa Boy. What's his program? Is he Stradbroke uh, wise? Well, there's a little bit of a problem there because someone forgot to nominate him for the Stradbroke handicap. A connection set after the win yesterday. Well, he's earned. $400,000 or near enough to that in prize money yesterday. They're entitled to spend the 25 large to get him into the big race. They're not going to watch Scalacci. He's likely to stay in Brisbane for that after he was scratched from the 10,000 yesterday. So they said, well, we'll let Scalacci have the QDC Cup. We'll go for the Stradbroke Handicap and Connections will put So here's the Goodwood Handicap of uh, 1992. There's a real crowding, cogitate just off the main body and then came Hugh Clays at the 600, dashed away two in front and is going deliberately deep. Dapper's Hope nearer its insiders after it, Ruffian T. Habit, Dapper's Hope after Hugh Clays in the running at the 200. They're clear of cogitate working home the inside. It's Dapper's Hope coming out after Hugh Clays, but I'll tell you something, the top weight is finding heaps. Hugh Clays, Hugh Clays is racing away from them. Jeff and Beryl White, will they celebrate at the Hyatt Regency tonight? I thank you. You players has bolted him with a good wood. Three lengths to Dapper's Hope, third cogitate. Yes, he was really very, very impressive. John, uh, John to uh, Brisbane for the Stradbroke and on that. Very well. Uh, Hugh Clays yesterday got out to terrific odds in the Goodwood Handicap, 10 to 1. He's got a marvellous record in Adelaide, having won two... Talking about the odds, the bookmakers aren't generally generous people, but 10 to 1 about a horse who last start started odds on to beat Scalacci. To me, it was just too good uh, not to take up, and I'm afraid I did... A lot about this horse. Let's look at his scintillating performance. His acceleration's outstanding. QTC Cup, Scalacci. Up towards the crossing, they've got 6.50 metres to go and Roman Senators, the leader, a length in front of Scalacci. In third place, he's no saint on the outside, followed by Lord Triton in the middle. Express Royal Deputy next and then Lord Triton in the straight, 400 metres to go. Roman Senators, the leader, shifting his ground a little bit. Scalacci's chasing him on the outside and here comes Blaylock's bull. He's joining in very quickly. Scalacci's moved up to Roman Senator. He's got his nose in front, Scalacci. Blaylock's bull trying hard on the outside. They're clear of Heavenly Knight. Scalacci's in front. He's shot away from them. This is the Big Grey, look at him go the last little bit. Scalacci's too good for the money. Equal flying home at the end, but Scalacci's won it. Scalacci's bull, he's joining in very quickly. Scalacci's moved up to Roman Senator. He's got his nose in front, Scalacci. Blaylock's bull trying hard on the outside. They're clear of Heavenly Knight. Scalacci's in front, he's shot away from them. This is the Big Grey, look at him go the last little bit. Scalacci's too good for the money. Equal flying home at the end, but Scalacci's won it. Scalacci first, unequal second, third. QTC Cup. Keith Hillier joins us as always. Keith, uh, we, I laughed anyway when uh, Lee Friedman said, well, he could be the next Manakata. He's not quite there and he may never get there, but he's on the way. Oh, is he ever, Bruce? A fantastic performance uh, from Scalacci yesterday. He had uh, three kilos more than weight for age. He hadn't raced for five weeks and uh, he took his for five weeks and uh, he took his record to nine starts, seven wins in a second, and that was a first pass the post anyway. He's a fantastic sprinter. I just Blaylock's ball eased up on the line. There's the market, Wayne. Five to two, Scalacci, and five to one, Rough Habit for the Stradbroke. And have they taken this horse? Of just painted about the adoration of Scalacci. This horse has won the triple uh, sprint crown down here. The Oakley, the Lightning, and the Newmarket Handicap. He won the Galaxy at Randwick. He's won the QTC Cup. And he may now win the Stradbroke. Yet he may not be Horse of the Year. That seem, sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? Well, it just says what a great year Let's Elope's had because I think she still deserves it no matter what he does in the Stradbroke. Uh, she was able to win five Group 1s, including the Caulfield Melbourne Cups, and her win in the Australian Cup was unforgettable. Uh, do you He's had 20 wins from 37 starts. That's uh, a winning strike rate, obviously, of better than 50%. Yet, amazingly, his starting price yesterday, and he's never raced in anything less than the top company, was 11 to 1. I couldn't believe that, one. Huge odds, and there's a big go for Scalacci. Wayne, I'll ask you a little bit about Scalacci, maybe Barossa Boy. Let's go to the Stradbroke, though, and see the complete race. It is an extraordinary performance from Rough Habit. Racing Turvey near the inside, fast away. Rekabite Hula with brunch time. Prince Triadia, Rough Habit second last, and Royal Deputy at the rear of the field. Coming up towards the 650, Hugh Clays. He's moved over onto the rails. He's the leader. Scalacci's running second. Fausti Esther third, followed by Hula Gray. Kenjatea's next on the rails. Infallible improving on the outside. Then Carson's Cash. Well back as they straighten up is Turvey on the inside of Rekabite. Barossa Boy pulled to the outside and coming wide to is Megzigo in the straight. And he said, Let's go on Scalacci. 
Scalacci, he's moved up and he's hit the front. 250 metres to go, Scalacci's the leader. Barossa Boy is chasing him on the outside and he's looming as a big danger. Scalacci's in front, joined by Barossa Boy. Barossa Boy's hit the lead, look at Rough Habit. Rough Habit's flying on the rails. Rough Habit moved up, grabbed the lead and he's won the straight road. What a performance. Rough Habit first, Barossa Boy second. Third, they straighten up his turvy on the inside of Recobite. Barossa Boy pulled to the outside and coming wide to his Meg's ego in the straight and he said let's go on Scalacci he's moved up and he's hit the front 250 metres to go Scalacci's the leader Barossa Boy is chasing him on the outside and he's looming as a big danger Scalacci's in front joined by Barossa Boy Barossa Boy's hit the lead look at Rough Habit Rough Habit's flying on the rails Rough Habit moved up grabbed the lead and he's won the straight road what a performance Rough Habit first Barossa Boy second third home was either Meg's ego or Wrecker by Kinjitay just behind them, then Scalacci. Must congratulate you, Wayne. Uh, it was a brilliant call there. Uh, 20 wins out of 37, as Keith said, 2.23 million. Quite interestingly, 13 of his 20 wins have been at either 1,400 metres or 1,600, yet this horse has been good enough to win the BMW at 2,400. And he actually ran a very good race in the Japan Cup last year when we thought he was out of form, where he was very credible. Keith, I was a bit surprised when we went through that, and, and his victories have been around seven furlongs and a mile because he's... He's more of a performance yesterday by Rough Habit, one of the great wins, in the, I think, for this season anyway, and maybe for a decade. Yes, it thrilled everyone, Bruce. Last to first, John Wheeler declared those plans in the morning that he would uh, drop out Rough Habit, or Jim Cassidy would, and pray for a run in the straight. Well, someone up there must like Jim Cassidy, because he got, I suppose he's got the right initials anyway, hasn't he? <laughs> but it was uh, certainly a memorable uh, race and a memorable ride. Well, to see this horse ducking and weaving and threading his way through. Oh, it certainly was, Bruce. It, I had a look at the replay after after the race and uh, it was more or less Scalacci, um, rough habit just uh, turning his head to the side and saying to Jimmy Cassidy well I'll do the running you do the steering and uh, together we'll go on and we'll win the Stradbroke handicap and um, Scalacci we should how does this rank amongst the the great races you've seen at Eagle Farm I think that race yesterday was the best I've ever seen that was a marvelous performance a once-in-a-lifetime performance by by rough habit and the ride of his life let's have a look at the race now because it's a great finish and uh, Kinjite uh, was gallant in defeat, Rough Habit to creating history by winning the Dooman Cup for a second consecutive year to go with his two Stradbroke handicap wins. Captain Cook leads by a length on Majestic Boy. There's left to go. Captain Cook is the leader. Majestic Boy running second. Kinjate is running third. Cross Swords is next on the rails, then Seamest. Rough Habit about four deep as they run to the bend, but he's coming out after these leaders. Into the home straight, 350 metres to go. Captain Cook is the leader, a length in front of Majestic Boy. On the outside, Kinjate and Rough Habit. Rough Habit starting to gather them in now. Here he comes. Rough Habit's joining in quickly on the outside and inside the 200 metre point. He's hit the front. Kinjate's going with him. Rough Habit and Kinjate. Rough Habit just in front of Kinjate. Kinjate grabbing him. They hit it. Oh, it's close. Very close. Kinjate or Rough Habit. It could go either way. Ten now. Here he comes. Rough Habit's joining in quickly on the outside and inside the 200 metre point. He's hit the front. Kinjate's going with him. Rough Habit and Kinjate. Rough Habit just in front of Kinjate. Kinjate grabbing him. They hit it. Oh, it's close. Very close. Kinjate or Rough Habit. It could go either way. Tight for third as well. A great run. Well, what did you think? Even the trainer of Kinjate, Noel Doyle, asked stewards to have a good look at that photo finish before he would accept that Kinjate had been beaten. Yes, yeah, an extraordinary finish. Terrific horse, isn't he? Oh, he is a fantastic horse, Bruce, and he brought sand down locally here to uh, its toes yesterday. Everyone cramming closer to their TVs, trying to work out who'd won that photo finish and most plump for Kinjate. Well, Wayne Wilson, I think the true qualities of a champion were evident yesterday with Rough Habit. After he got that bump, you could see him just stick his head out and he said, well, I'm not going to cop that. I still want to win this race. And he did in a very deceptive finish. I think almost everyone had doomed, but except Johnny Willer thought that Kinjate had got the decision. And Chairman, of a great performance again by this marvellous racehorse, Rough Habit. And believe me, in the spring, You'll see the best of him. Do you believe him, Keith? I think we'll hear. I hope so, don't you? Yes, he's an exciting horse. Uh, the margin was a nose. That's the shortest possible margin. The judge later said that the actual distance, Bruce, was six centimetres. Now, that pen top is six centimetres. And that's the, uh, the margin that, won, that made a difference of $135,000.